Hello everybody. Resented here, and I'm in Slay the Spire. Now, uh, for those of you who follow me on the YouTube sphere, uh, I don't like calling it that. That seems kind of weird. But, um, I am not fully, uh, I'm not fully returned from my, my break. I've just been playing this game a lot in my spare time, and so I figured I might as well try and record a few videos of it, and, you know, sort of just see how it is. Uh, let's see, I, I, I'm looking immediately on like this. I, I should probably slow down a little bit and sort of explain this game for those of you who are unaware of this. Slay the Spire is a sort of rogue-like card game uh, and I think it's it's gotten pretty dang popular recently because a lot of uh, people seem to be playing it. Uh, I've jumped on the train because I actually saw Northern Lion play it because I do I watch his content very very frequently. I'm a huge fan and he played the game and a lot of the a lot of the people share the same uh, mindset with me but I picked up the game because I saw him making so many mistakes that I had to just buy the game myself and play it <laughs> to like quell the anger that I had watching him make all these misplays. And so uh, hopefully you'll sort of catch on to the game as uh, I play it. Uh, it does have permadeath so like once you die the run is it's done and uh, as you can see here there there is a sort of a uh, roguelikey uh, mechanics in in that you get to you get to choose your starting position and then the floor itself kind of generates randomly here and there's different encounters depending on the path that you choose and so you choose a starting position and then you go along the path all the way to the boss fight which then the next floor spawns and then uh, once you get to the boss on the second floor you then go to the third floor and then when you fight that boss that is the end of the game uh, the game is in early access, so content you see here is subject to change, it's subject to get removed, it's subject to be completely reworked, you know, all that all that good stuff. So as you can see here, there's a few places. There's these little things, these are just regular uh, combats. There's a question mark which could have anything from like a random event to combat itself. Uh, there's these little gold bags which are uh, shops, and then there's these angrier enemies. These are elites. These are sort of like mini bosses. Uh, there's campfires where you can rest to heal up or you can uh, upgrade one of your many starting cards or any cards that you pick up along the way. Oops. And then again at the very end you get to fight a boss. And so uh, I'm playing as the silent. She's a sort of poison uh, defensive unit I want to say. Uh, but each run does have enough card variation to feel a little different. You can play each character a little bit differently. Uh, there's two characters you might have saw at the beginning. The first one is uh, called the Ironclad. He's more of like a warrior. He's more damage based, uh, but he can also be built defensively as well, depending on the cards that you have in your deck. And so with all of that being said, we're already about four minutes in, I haven't even started playing the game. I'm probably gonna choose this one. Enemies in the next three combats have one HP because I did find a path here that allows me to get to an elite fight uh, on the third combat. So one combat, two combat. And then if I go up this path here, I get to this elite, which is three. And then from there, uh, enemies will have regular health. But elites are important because uh, you have these items up here. You have the, excuse me. You have these items up here called relics, and each relic has its own unique sort of trait. So like this one is uh, the silent starting relic. It it lets me draw two additional cards at the start of combat, and you won't get a good idea of combat just yet since I chose the one where enemies only have uh, one HP. And so then you get rewards at the end of each combat, like I got a potion, this one specifically deals 10 damage to all enemies. I got a little bit of gold, and you get to choose to add a card to your deck. So, you know, this this now goes into the meat of the game where you get to sort of build the deck that you want. And so, 
I could do expertise, draw cards until I have six. I could do acrobatics or poison stab. Poison stab will make me uh, gravitate towards a more poison based deck, but uh, you know, future cards might not be poison based, and I'll pick those instead, and the deck will start gravitating back towards another playstyle. We'll have to see. I'm going to pick that because I think it's pretty good. Uh, let's go here. And now these boys are going to have one HP. And I'm going to I'm gonna probably just plow through these combats real quick so that you get to see more about the, uh, the game, the gameplay itself, as opposed to seeing me just instantly kill all the enemies that I come into uh, combat with. So Bane uh, further refines my poison deck because uh, poison stab applies poison and Bane uh, deals extra damage if they're poisoned. Uh, but also, I really, really like Leg Sweep. Leg Sweep is a really good like defensive card, uh, and also applies too weak, which makes enemies deal uh, less damage. Leg Sweep is really good, but I think I'm gonna pick Bane just to uh, continue going with the Poison deck. I can go to a shop, or I can go to a question mark. I'm probably not gonna go to a shop because even though there doesn't seem to be a shop ahead of me. 134 gold isn't really that much to go off of. So now we get a random encounter. And so, as you can see here, this one specifically has a shining gold idol. Uh, I can I can choose whichever one I want. If I take it, it triggers a trap, which then I have to choose a detriment. Uh, but Or I can just leave and not get the gold idol. It's early in the game, and the gold idol gives you more gold. So I'm going to trigger it, and then you get to choose three things. You can become cursed, which adds a negative card into your deck. I can just take 17 damage, or I can lose five max HP. Um, I'm prob I'm probably not going to take the curse because there's no way for me to uh, remove it. You can remove cards in certain situations. You can remove them at a shop, or you can remove them from random encounters. Uh, but that's about it. There's a few extra scenarios, but they're a little bit more rare. So I'm probably just going to take the damage, honestly. That's fine by me. And I still have this. I want to keep that in mind. So I'm going to skip the combat. And there could be combat in these uh, question mark rooms. So if there's combat here, then I'm screwed because I have to fight an elite no matter what. And if this gets popped... Uh, before I reach an elite, it's gonna make the elite fight much, much harder. And so right there, I can remove a card from my deck, but I didn't take the curse, so there's no real point to doing that. I can heal 17, that'll put me back to max HP. And I think I'm gonna do that. No combat. Ah, it's combat, damn it. Yeah, so there goes the, there goes that. It's fine. I'm at full HP, so fighting an elite isn't that big of a deal. Uh, Sucker Punch is pretty good because applying weak is good. Dagger Throw is fine if you have a discard deck because there are cards that uh, apply bonuses when you discard them, but I don't have that deck now. Uh, but Acrobatics is just really good for um, like card rotation. Do I need more damage? I don't think so because I did get Poison Step and Bane, so I probably don't need Sucker Punch. I'm going to take acrobatics and I'm gonna go to a campfire because I can then upgrade a card poison stab applies for poison you'll see what poison does uh, during combat um, yeah, upgrading a regular striker defend isn't that big of a deal Bane goes from dealing 14 damage to 20 damage that's pretty good this draws four cards I think I'm gonna up, uh, upgrade neutralize because it applies two weak which makes the weak last longer which is pretty important okay so now we actually get to see some combat all right so in combat you can see what the enemy is doing it doesn't tell you exactly what they're doing sometimes like in this case he's applying a buff to himself we don't know what that buff is unless you know the enemy patterns um at the start you're not going to really know what this does until he does it but the uh the intent here uh, does let you sort of get an idea of what they're going to do. Uh, and so since he is actually not attacking me, there's no reason to play any sort of defensive card. So I think I'm going to neutralize him because it's it's free. Uh, as you can see, every card here has an energy cost. This one, you know, all of them have an energy cost of one. And I have three energy. And then 
uh, actually all of my cards except for neutralize has a cost of one uh, but there are cards that have different different costs of course for those of you s even semi familiar with other like mana or energy based card games like magic or hearthstone okay so he is poisoned i got a lot of defense um he did get uh a buff called enrage where whenever i play a skill he gains two strength and strength increases uh his damage by the flat amount of strength he has so if he has like plus one strength this will go from 10 damage to 11 damage and a skill is my defensive cards so every time i play one of these defensive cards he gets plus two strength which is pretty bad um so it's basically do i want to play a skill to make him permanently buffed for the future or do i want to take 10 damage and not buff him you know so you gotta you gotta like, take that into consideration i think i'm going to do two even though it's plus four strength it's the difference between me taking three damage and me taking 10 damage but now he is going to deal quite a bit of damage i could take uh 12 if i use this that's just a difference of six though i i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it i'll do it so that that using survivor makes me discard a card and discard just puts it into your discard pile uh since i have no energy it was gonna get discarded anyway so there's really uh no downside okay 12 damage that's not too bad we're gonna neutralize him and i i think i'm gonna do this i'll deal seven damage he's not poisoned so it didn't deal seven more damage and i will block once more Okay, now he's dealing 15. I could probably kill him. Okay, no, he's actually dead because uh, the poison is going to deal 3 damage at the start of his turn, and that's and that's lethal. Boom. Alright, and so elite fights give you a relic, and in this case we get kunai, which uh, every 3 attacks I play in a single turn I gain 1 dexterity, and each dexterity point... Uh, increases the amount of block that I get from cards uh, and so for instance if I get plus one dexterity backflip will give me six block instead of five okay um, I want a thousand cuts because a thousand cuts is actually really good every time that I play a card I get one damage dealt to every enemy I don't think my HP is low enough to rest let me let me see real quick yeah, I could just go here and rest if I have to. So I am going to upgrade a thousand cuts. I deal two damage to all enemies whenever I play a card. That's pretty dang good. Then we get War Paint. Uh, it upgrades two random skills, so it's going to pick uh, probably two defense because I have more defense than any anything else. Oh no, it got acrobatics. That's good. All right, we got a couple of these boys. These boys make me vulnerable when I kill them, which makes me take more damage. Do I actually just want to start with a thousand cuts? I have no defensive cards actually, which makes me then think, could I use the explosive potion? I could try to get one of them dead. Like, I'll do that. I can do that. Okay, I got one dexterity because I played three attacks, and then he's dead, so I actually don't need to play the explosive potion, and then I'll just attack him. So he's going to make me vulnerable when he gets killed, which makes him deal more damage to me. So I took nine damage instead of six, which sucks, but they do have relatively low HP, so there's really not that much to worry about. Okay. And then any strike is going to kill him, so there we go. And then we get to add a card. Predator seems pretty good. Uh, but I really like Outmaneuver. You play it for one energy, and on your next turn, you gain two energy. 
I think that's pretty damn good, actually. So let's go to the campfire. We'll rest up. We're up to 62 HP, which is not bad at all. Another one of these dudes. I don't like them. Get out of here. I could just straight up go ham on him. Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh, and I'm I'm talking about freaking Northern Lion making misplays. For some reason, I played Neutralize, and I thought that I played Poison Stab. So I played Bane right after trying to deal the bonus damage. And... Obviously, Bane didn't deal bonus damage, because I didn't play Poison Stab first. I played Neutralize first. Okay, so now there's a decent chance... I can get out of here unscathed. Ooh, actually. Damn, yeah, actually, I'm I'm frail, which makes me gain less block from my card, so I'm actually gonna take a little bit of damage. Which sucks. I could have played the explosive potion, but I don't think it's worth it on just one enemy that doesn't deal a lot of damage. Okay, so this sucks because I mean I could I actually could just kill him with a thousand cuts, but I do want to kill him with a strike. Okay, so what do we got? There is a an option to do a discard meta, but I do like cloak and dagger, but I might also just take nothing because these cards don't actually, you know what, with cloak and dagger, it gives me some shivs which are zero cost attack cards. And, and that helps with a thousand cuts. With a thousand cuts, you want to be able to play a lot of cards in your turn so that they deal a lot of damage. Oh my god, look at all these freaking... I want to play a thousand cuts so bad. Actually, I can. Because watch this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack him. Watch this. So now there's three enemies below 10 HP. Deal 10 damage to all enemies, boom. I could make him weak, but <laughs> four damage is almost nothing. This dude, uh, whenever you attack him with a attack card, he gains one strength, but he is, he is straight up dead. We got a regen potion, that's pretty good. Glass knife is pretty good. Piercing whale is really good too. Uh, do I want... I think with a Thousand Cuts deck, I want card rotation. Oh my god, these boys again. I don't have uh, that explosion, explosion potion again. Let's play Cloak and Dagger because it gives me block and it's going to deal damage to all of them. And I don't think I can kill any of the ones that are going to attack me. But I can get one really low. Okay. And that's fine. I'm going to take like 11 damage. No, I'm sorry. 9 damage. And the good thing is, uh, weakened, weakened only affects attack damage. So a thousand cuts uh, isn't affected by uh, being weakened. Let's do this. I kind of want to just keep playing low energy cards so that I get enough a thousand cuts uh, popped. Um, now I can bane you and I'm going to take no damage. There you go. That's the way to do it. All right, just, just attack him. Doesn't matter. Let's see, poison. It would have been nice if I had a poison deck, but I don't. Um, dagger throw. Uh, I don't really have a good like discard deck. It, it does give a little, little bit of rotation, but don't think it's good enough. Now I will rest. So we're are, we are at basically full HP for the boss here. We're fighting the guardian. And so what he does is, after you deal 30 damage, he goes into a defensive mode where he um, starts reflecting damage back to you when you attack him. Uh, 
gas just bane, honestly. Do I have poison? Oh, I do have a poison deck. I am I'm stupid. Okay, is there a... Yeah, I, I went from... I basically went from a poison deck. I, I do have the poison cards. I should have probably taken the poison uh, card earlier, but... Uh, I switched, I, I basically switched from poison deck to a, a card rotation deck with a thousand cuts, so, you know, maybe it was for the greater good that I, uh, didn't pick that poison up. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get enough damage dealt to, uh, yeah, pop his defensive mode. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to weaken him, and I'll take the 18 damage. Okay. And there's the poison. So now he's going to switch to a defensive mode. He gets 20 armor, and there's really no reason to play anything. And if I can in the future, I might want to get rid of my poison cards because I'm I'm going away from a poison deck. And so now since he's in a defensive mode, uh, he does have this sharp hide bonus where whenever I, whenever I attack him, he he deals uh, three damage to me. So I will neutralize. I'll I'll take the the hits. Even though it's gonna make him deal damage to me now that I. Uh, have less block, but getting the, the kunai to pop as much as I can is gonna make my defensive cards a lot better. I might even wanna like also also switch to a shiv deck, because there are a lot of shiv cards for this character, and getting a lot of shivs means I pop kunai often. Uh, let's see, I'll play outmaneuver because I do like that card. Uh, both of these give me nine block. Um, ba, 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 ba. Go ahead and block, and I'll just poison stab him. Let's go ahead. Hit me for six. I don't care. Now, unfortunately, this deck does not have a lot of damage, so it's a little iffy. But if I'm able to get a shiv deck going... Uh, then we could we could we could we could cook really quickly. Also, uh, a shiv deck a shiv deck works well not only with a thousand cuts but also with a kunai. So that's that, that's basically a deck that I definitely want to get into. I could also drink my dexterity potion to get more block, but it's not that big of a deal. Cause he is gonna, he's gonna definitely go into defensive mode. Okay, let's do that. Now, do I want to waste my card rotation? Yeah, I have a lot of energy, so I'll be able to play whatever. Yeah, get those, those kunai pops. I did actually deal enough damage to get through his armor. Let's see. I'll play Survivor. I can get Kunai to pop if I do Neutralize, if I do Strike, and if I do Strike again. And yeah, we're going pretty slow. Because uh, we don't really have a lot of damage, but... So far, so good. It's not, it's not horrible. Um... I could get Kunai to pop again if I wanted. Honestly, let's just do that. I'm in no rush. Let's do that. Boom. I wanted to play out maneuver, but I think getting the extra dexterity is important now that I'm low on health. Okay. He's he is poisoned, so Bane will do a lot of damage. And there we go. He's gonna hit me for ten. But he's more than likely going to die next turn. And there you go. Goodbye. 
Goodbye. You are dead. So that was very, very slow. I'm hoping... Oh, a thousand cuts again. Adrenaline is, is good, though, for the... The card draw. Uh, Ori... Choosing to add five cards to your deck. That's not too bad. Runic Pyramid? I don't know if that's good or not. Lizard Tail is also pretty good. It revives you when you die. Um, let's try this one, though. The five cards. Noxious Fumes does bring it back to a relative poison deck. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Heal Hook. If he's weak, gain and draw a card. That's good, especially since I've already upgraded Neutralize to uh, elongate the weakness. And especially since I am uh, going for like a card draw deck, I think Heal Hook can be useful. We have to pick a card. I can't... Uh... Oh, wait, shit. Did I just actually skip it? I thought you couldn't... Oh, I thought you couldn't skip the Ori. Oh, man. So I skipped four... Four potential cards. I didn't know, I didn't know you could do that. Because it, it says choose and add five cards to your deck. It doesn't imply that you can skip them. So I thought, oh, we, we can... We can't skip them, but you... You totally can. Well, that sucks, but... We learned something. I want to go to that shop, but I don't want to fight three enemies in a row. It's fine. This uh, first video is just a learning video for those of you unfamiliar. So the only other shop is here after an elite fight, which I don't want to do. Um, there's one here before an elite fight. So I basically have to fight three combats in a row if I want to go to that shop, which I really do because I have a lot of gold. So let's see here. Um... Let's see if I can draw into a thousand cuts. I can do acrobatics. Let's do this. I maybe shouldn't have done that since um I didn't need the defense. Excuse me, I didn't I didn't need the defense, but um the extra shiv was nice, I guess. So this dude hexes me, and whenever I play a non-attack card, so anything that doesn't attack him, uh, I get one dazed, which is a status that basically adds useless cards into your draw pile. Uh, do I want to play a thousand cuts? I do. Even though it puts a daze in my deck. Let's do this. So he's weak. I can do that. Do I want to backflip? Yeah, let's backflip. Poison him. That was not a bad turn. We did about half of his health in damage. He did increase his strength, and he did weaken me, but... Wow, really? All I have is a Bane? That's stupid. I could play more cards to, uh... Just deal 1,000 cuts damage, but every time I play it, I get one dazed. And, especially since I have no more cards in my draw pile, playing these cards are almost gonna guarantee that I, uh... Draw nothing but dazes on my next turn, so I'm gonna just go ahead and not play anything. He hasn't attacked me yet, which is fine, but he's really strong. And he's going to apply, um, I'm pretty sure vulnerable on me, which is really bad. I'm, I'm freaking, I'm frail. I'm frail. Seven block, go ahead. It's fine. Deal nine damage to me. I have to kill him on my next turn. I really... Oh, he's not going to attack me while I'm vulnerable. That is very nice of you. This dude is, is typically a lot more dangerous, but just luck allowed me to not take too much damage. Uh, deflect is okay. Two zero-cost cards uh, work really well with my kunai and my thousand cuts, so I think I'm going to take slice. Yeah, let's go here. And depending on how this fight does, I can I can bail on another enemy fight if I have to and go straight up to a campfire. I'd rather not skip a, a shop while I have this much gold, but if I have to, I'll, I'll do it. So let's just attack him. He has barricade, which makes him not lose his block at the end of his turn. So I'll play outmaneuver and just... 
and just wait it out. He also has Artifact, which uh, makes negative effects not be applied to him for the first three times that you do it. Let's see, I'll play a thousand cuts. I'll do that. Cloak and Dagger. I'll play Acrobatics. I'll get rid of a Defend. And I can actually get Kunai to, to pop with these cards. So that didn't that did not weaken him. It removed an artifact, but it's just free damage. So I'll play it. Five frail. That's freaking insane, dude. Let's see. Um. So poison stab is kind of useless because it doesn't poison him. It just deals less damage than a strike. I kind of want to defend as much as I can. Actually, let's uh, draw back foot first. My cat is <laughs> meowing up a storm. <laughs> Do you hear him? Even with my frail, I, I... Oh my god, he's going crazy. Even with my frail, I was able to get 14 armor. And that was, that was his big attack, so I'm happy that I didn't take too much damage. Okay, now we're starting to get into... Damn, one health, of course. Yeah, we're starting to get into the, the final HP. But, actually this sucks because I couldn't kill him. And now, he got 15 block that I, I can't do anything about because I don't have any fucking uh, damage cards. So do that. I'm going to take an extra 8 damage. Which really sucks. Okay, I think he's dead. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Come on. He, ha he has to be dead. Thank you. A strength potion is good. Accuracy is good. <coughs> Excuse me. I inhaled too quickly. So yeah, accuracy makes shivs deal bonus damage, which I think is actually really good. Even though I don't really have that much of a shiv deck. We could. Oh, these guys suck. Okay, I actually literally literally might just pop everything. I'm going to do the regen potion to get some health back, and I'll pop the dex potion as well. I'll do that. I'll play survivor. Okay. So I'm going to block all of their damage. I think this person makes me frail. Yeah. Okay. That's fine, that's fine. No worries. Uh, just a cloak and dagger. Poison stab. I kind of want to do outmaneuver, but Bane. Oh, I can, I can still do it, I can still do it. There's Kunai popping. Uh, and that's it, okay, that's, a, that's our turn. I want to kill the Mystic first because um, she makes me frail and she Heals, which I don't like. Oh my, I don't know if I can. That's 12. I'm gonna do like one or two damage to you. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this. Oh, a thousand cuts actually would have dealt more damage. That's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I'm blocking all the damage. She's gonna heal, which I don't like. Yeah, 16 health is really bad. Ooh, there's there's a chance to get heal hook going. I'll do accuracy. I have no defense, which really really sucks. Kunai's gonna pop off of that, so I'm just gonna take 12 damage. She's gonna heal again, which I don't like. She's gonna heal again. Oh my god, and I got all defensive cards this time. This is so bad. I just have to do that for a thousand cuts. Come on. Oh, okay, okay, it was a strength bonus. Is it another strength bonus, or are you 
attacking again. Okay, let's go after you this time, even though you are defended. Ooh, we got you. Thank God. That is gonna do a lot of damage, probably. Not yet. He does have a big attack that he does. Oh, and with my kunai pops, one survivor was enough to get my defense up. So this fight didn't go as bad as I was thinking. He still isn't doing his big attack, which is interesting. I think I can just kill him? Yeah. Okay, not bad. This weird deck sort of... Another odd maneuver. This weird deck sort of works. Caltrops is is that decent with my play with my deck style? I don't think so. I mean, I'm not like a heavily defensive. Uh, I don't have a heavily defensive deck. So we finally get to a shop after all this time. I get Apotheosis, which is what I was looking for. It upgrades all of my cards for the rest of combat, so all these cards get their upgraded version, which can be really amazing. So let's let's pick that. It doesn't it doesn't let me do anything else, which which sucks because um, all of these are actually really good. But that's totally fine. Let's see, a slice. Oops, sorry, my, I bumped my microphone. A slice isn't that bad. Footwork is really good. Uh, it gives me dexterity. It stacks well with kunai. I can get, I'll get that. And if I get this, I can also remove a card. So let's remove our first card. What don't I want? Should I just get rid of my poison? I'll, 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 I'll slowly... I'll slowly get my poison out of here. So I'll keep the poison stab itself, because it still gives a little bit of, of use, but I want to phase that out uh, as soon as I can. Uh, let's see. So I'll have to go here, but then after that, what do I want to do? Uh, campfire, two combats, three combats technically, or one combat campfire, one combat. So this has two combats with the campfire, this has three combats with a campfire. I think since I'm really low on health, shit, it'll 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 have to defend depend on what happens on this combat. So this one this one can be bad. Let's try. There is neutralize. I'm gonna kill this guy first because he uh, gets more powerful as the fight goes on, which can be really really bad. There is accuracy. So let's play that. And I will just go ahead and uh, strike him. If I need to, I can play the strength potion to just deal more damage if I have to. So after he does ritual, uh, he gets three strength every turn, which it stacks really fast. There's apotheosis. Let's do it. Okay. So I think he's just gonna die. One more should do it. No, oh, two poison, come on. All right, get out of here. And if I get a bad draw, okay, this is not that bad of a draw. Now I have, I have just one days. So I th think I'll I don't need to play so it doesn't really matter. I'll just play one defense and I'll take no damage. He made me vulnerable, which can be bad because now he's dealing quite a bit of damage. What do I draw? I'll draw defend and I'll draw acrobatics if I play this. Let's go ahead and do it. I'll play footwork for extra dexterity and I want to play out the vulnerable but I'm thinking he's just doing it again because he's doing a debuff I'll play a defense and you got to think I can slow play it because I have a thousand cuts slowly whittling him down 
but I will play Outmaneuver so that next turn... I'm going to draw three dazes, which sucks because I'm going to do three dazes plus two more cards. So this this next draw could be really, really bad. Yeah, he just, he just fucking did it again. And now he's doing 31 damage. Are you kidding me? And I have no... Should I just... This will make it deal like 7 plus 8, like 15 damage, as opposed to 11. I really don't think that matters. So I'm not dead, but I'm going to be extremely close. And this is the this is the sort of problem I have with this game. Uh, it's just like enemies seem to just kind of come out of nowhere with, with just like shit that kills you. Like that move probably has killed me multiple times. But it's like... I don't know. It seems like the the game emphasizes being able to sort of build your own deck, but then it punishes you for not having the right deck in certain combat situations. You know, it it just doesn't make much sense to me because they have specific enemies that are anti-specific decks. Like for instance, this guy is an anti-burst deck because Whenever you deal HP damage to him, uh, he gains block. But when you remove the block and deal more HP damage to him, the block increases. So first, he'll get 3 block. And on the same turn, if you deal more damage, it'll go to 4 block and then 5 block. And so it's just sort of like anti... You'll see what I mean whenever I start attacking him. So like I'll strike him, I'll deal HP damage. He gets 3 block. And now it's up to 4. So if I strike him again, he goes up to 4 block. And this resets to 3 after every turn, so he's like anti-burst, which in itself isn't that big of a deal, but he, this enemy also does exactly this. He does 21 damage, like base, like just base damage, he does, he does 21 damage. So he's anti-burst and he himself deals a absolute shit ton of damage, and it just, sometimes it doesn't seem fair. Sometimes it, it's just like you have to go into like a sort of damage control all the time so like this person dealing 21 damage every single time means you have to either whittle him down and take a lot of damage or keep going into damage control to take as little damage as possible while also not dealing a lot of damage to him it's just like, and so see, I'm going to take 6 damage. And he's going to deal 21 damage on the next turn. And so now it's just sort of like, well, what am I going to do? Um, I think I'm literally dead. Maybe I should have played Apotheosis first because I might have gotten more defense. Yeah, I think I'm actually just dead right there. That probably killed me. Yeah. And there you have it. A familiar feeling. Don't rub it in, okay? And that's just, that's Slay the Spire. It, it's really addicting because I'm always coming back to it, but I also feel like it can be a little unfair at some points. I don't know. There, there are some runs where you get really lucky with card draw and you steamroll, but then there's situations like that where the enemies just sort of it just doesn't seem fair because <laughs> like i'm okay with an enemy that's anti-burst and i'm also okay with an enemy that is geared towards uh just dealing high damage but having an enemy that's both a really tanky boy and a high damage boy i don't know it just doesn't seem f really fair in some situations but again the game's early access they're constantly uh you know balancing like this is the the patch notes for like you know all the way for some reason you can't go too far even though you can see there's more text but it doesn't let you scroll down any further for some strange reason you can kind of you can kind of go lower if you're really fast with it but it doesn't let you go down much further for some reason but yeah the game is constantly undergoing changes they're they're tweaking enemies uh, as uh people uh discuss the game so i'm uh, probably not the, the the 
the most prominent player, and I, I know I, I made some mistakes during that run, and I could have played a little bit better in some situations, but it does give some feeling of unfairness in certain situations. And despite all of that, I still really enjoy the game, but yeah, we'll see how uh, how they plan on, on changing the game in, in the future. They're gonna add a new character, uh, so we'll see some different play styles, and hopefully I get better as I keep playing. So, with all that being said, that's the end of this this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please show your appreciation by liking, comment, subscribing, all of that garbage. Uh, I'll leave a link to Slay the Spire in the description below. Uh, next video shouldn't be nearly as slow. This video was just sort of uh, describing the game and showing off how it works. The next video should should go a lot quicker. And so yeah, that's the end of this video. I'll see you guys next time.